Elmer in the Netherlands writes to me, I currently have a set of IMF RSPM MK4 speakers, which I adore. The new filters and the I added new filters and they sound fantastic. The lows especially are in the league of its own, down to 17 hertz. I'm sure the Aspen series go really low, but I often found that subwoofers or bass reflex bass sounds less clean than the sound of a transmission line. How do you see this? Has technology caught up today and are these outmoded? Well, the IMF series was by an old friend, Bud Freed. And Bud was a great guy, good friend of Arnie Newdell. I didn't know Bud all that. I've had dinner with him multiple times. Bud always, he was just a fun guy. Totally dedicated and serious on speakers. And Bud was into transmission lines. And there is good stuff with transmission lines. In fact, the very first speaker that I ever heard that got our partnership going was Stan Warren. And Stan, my the S and PS audio, had a pair of homemade transmission line speakers using, I think he had an eminence woofer and he had a Heil air motion transformer on top. And it was a good sounding system. Stan had built it himself. So what is a transmission line? Well, quite simply, it is like a maze for the back of a speaker. And at the output is a port. So here's how it works. And I am no speaker expert. Chris would be much better at this, but I can't get him over here to make these videos. Chris. Anyway, he's got better things to do. So in a normal ported speaker, we have a, a box, a woofer, and a hole in the box. The hole in the box is a port. And it's usually in the back, sometimes in the front. And that port helps tune the speaker and get a little bit better bass response, right? But that port, and one of the reasons it's in the back, is usually out of phase. And it's as the speaker is pressurizing the box, at some point, it's going to start coming out of the port, you can put your hand back there, you can feel it, you can, it does chuffing and all that, uh, and I'm not a big fan of ports. A transmission line says, I don't want an out of phase output coming out of the back. What I want is an in phase output from the back of my woofer coming out the front. How do we do that? Well, if we take the box and we make this maze where the sound has to, the, uh, from the back pressure of the woofer has to go through this long maze and it delays it by one cycle, right? So what's, and then it has a hole in the, in the front and comes out in phase and adds to the bass. It's one cycle behind, no big deal. We used to run subwoofers, we'd always have them one cycle behind. And that's how a transmission line works. It does have advantages. What I have found, thanks to Chris Brunhaver, is that a properly done passive radiator itself is kind of a port, solves both of those problems because it is one cycle behind, just like a transmission line, but you get much better bass out of it and it is much tighter. We don't have this open port and it's just an all around better solution. So my vote is to go with the passive radiator, but transmission lines definitely are cool.